Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to apply operations with vectors. So what we have is I have a list of vectors. Um, I have vectors u, v, w up there as written as a linear combination, but they also could be in component form. You could do the exact same thing. And I'll kind of change that up as well as I do some problems. Um, but basically what we're going to do is work on adding, subtracting, and multiplying by a scalar. So the main important thing is, you know, when applying operations with vectors, they're just kind of very similar when we're applying operations uh, you know, with numbers and uh, variables. Um, we can only combine like terms, meaning we can only add and subtract the, uh, the i's with the i's and the four i's uh, are, and the j's with the j's. So for instance, in this case, I have u plus v. So what we're going to do is we're going to write the vector u, which I can write just like this, 3i minus 4j. Now I'm going to put this in parentheses just so we make sure we keep everything separate. And really, that's not really important for addition, but that's going to be very important for subtraction. And therefore, then I'm going to add that to my v, which is negative i plus 7j. Now, as I mentioned, we don't really need the parentheses for addition, so I'm going to get rid of them in the next step. But I wanted to do it as basically just say, hey, you're, you're replacing u with what the vector is as a linear combination and v as the vector is a linear combination. Now we can only combine our like terms. So really, I have 3i plus negative i, 3i plus negative i. And then I have a negative 4j plus a positive 7j. OK? Now, just like if you're treating your i's and j's as like variables when we're adding, subtracting uh, you know, polynomials, we'll have 3i. Uh, minus 4j is going, I'm sorry, 3i plus negative i is just going to give you a 2i. And then negative 4j plus 7j is going to give you a positive 3j. And that is going to be what we call our resultant vector. Um, now let's get into u minus v. So when I'm doing u minus v, again, this is where parentheses come really, really in handy. So I have 3i minus 4j minus v, which is going to be negative i plus 7j. So there's a couple different ways to do this. And for each of these two separate ones, I'll do them in a different uh, format. But basically, what you, um, what you can do is apply the distributive property here and rewrite it as an addition problem. Because any subtraction problem, you can always rewrite it as an addition problem. So therefore, I have 3i minus 4j minus a negative i becomes a plus i. And minus a positive 7j becomes now a negative 7j. Now I can just combine my like terms. Rather than rewriting it, I'm just going to kind of do it a little bit similar. 3i plus i is going to be 4i. Negative 4j minus 7j. So if you owe me $4 and you borrow seven more dollars, you now owe me $11, or j, which we just represent our dollars. But just remember, when you combine like terms, we combine the coefficients and we leave the um, variable, in, in this case j, uh, exactly the same. All right. When subtracting, though, um, so you can see, basically, remember, order is very, very important. So let's go and take a look at how the, different, how the, the, um, the difference changes when we reverse uh, order. 3i minus 4j. Okay. Now, in this exact came, same case, you could do it, again, by just rewriting it as an addition problem. Or you could really just think of this as negative i minus 3i. So I can just rewrite the negative i minus 3i. And 7j minus a negative 4j, which is the same thing as positive. So positive 7j plus 4j. So here I'm just kind of doing it a little bit uh, in a different format. I'm just kind of distributing that in my head and rewriting it and together. So negative i minus 3i is going to be a negative 4i. And 7j plus 4j is going to be a positive 11j. So you can see here, basically, um, these actually just kind of swapped signs. Now, when dealing with a scalar, what I prefer to do is rather than, re rather than keeping my vectors in a linear combination, I like to write them in component form. Because to me, it just kind of makes a little bit sense. And you could have done that same thing for these. You could have written these in component form um, and done the same operations. Because again, what you're doing is you're, you're applying the operation to the coefficients of your i and j. But for 2w, I'm going to write it in component form. So I'm going to take w and rewrite that as its two components, which is negative 2 and 5. And basically, when, when you multiply a scalar, it's just like multiplying you know, a number of times you know, an expression. You're going to distribute the 2 to both of our terms. So therefore, I have a negative 4 comma 10. And that's going to be my resultant vector. And if I wanted to rewrite it back as a linear combination, I'll have negative 4i. Get a little better loop. Negative 4i blah, 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 plus 10j. 
All right, over into the next one. Now we're just doing a negative number. Um, so again, you could just basically take this as negative 3. If you wanted to keep it as a linear combination, you would do negative i plus 7j. And again, you're just basically distributing that uh, to both of your coefficients. So negative 3 times negative 1 is going to be a positive 1. So 3i, negative 3 times 7 is a negative 21j. Okay, So you don't really have to write them as in component form, but I kind of prefer it. In, in, the, in these last examples, uh, or at least these next two, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to rewrite this as 4. u is, in component form, is 3 comma negative 4 plus 3 times w, which is negative 2 comma 5. Then I'll just apply my distributive property here, and I basically get 12, negative 16, plus negative 6, plus 15. Oops, plus 15, what am I doing? Comma 15. Now, if you're going to be adding and combining in component form, basically, just like we did with linear combinations, you the i's, you know, we come. Oh, wait a minute. All right. Oh, OK, I did this in my head. Over here, the i's combine and the j's combine. Well, here, we're only going to combine my, um, my first components and my second components. So it's going to look something like this. 12 minus 6, comma, negative 16 plus 15. So 12 minus 6 is going to give us 6. And negative 16 plus 15 is going to give us a negative 1. And if we want to rewrite that as a linear combination, be 6i minus over here, let's do the same thing, but I'm just going to kind of simplify or just kind of pick it up a little bit. So I'm still going to write everything out because um, I always want to go back to that. And just in case I have any issues, oh, I should have subtracted those. Negative uh, 4 and then plus, I wrote the exact same one. It's kind of odd. Oh, that's supposed to be minus v. Sorry about that. I was wondering, I'm like, that's not really a difference. Uh, minus v, which is negative 1, comma, 7. OK, so let's go ahead and simplify this. Negative 4 times 3 is going to give us a negative 12. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. And then we're going to distribute that. Um, so I'll turn this into a positive or an addition problem. So that becomes a positive 1, comma, negative 7. Then I'm just going to combine my first two terms and my second two terms. So negative 12 plus 1 is going to give me a negative 11. 16 plus negative 7 is going to give me a positive 9. And then we'll just write this as a linear combination. OK, uh, in the last example, uh, basically you see we have w, or w plus v inside parentheses, then being multiplied by 2. So just following the order of operations, what we're going to want to do is add the w and the v first. So then we'll multiply them by 2. So it's going to look something like this. I'm going to write them in component form just to kind of make it a little bit more um, easier to view. So I'll do negative. So negative 2, oops, negative 2 comma 5 plus v, which is negative 1, 7. Okay, now I'm going to combine by adding my comp uh, first components and my second components. So the 2 still remains on the outside. So negative 2 plus negative 1 is a negative 3. And then 5 plus 7 is going to be a positive 12. Okay, now we don't really need the parentheses here. You can kind of see that um, basically I can just rewrite that 2 as a scalar on the outside. And then I'll basically go ahead and distribute. So that becomes a negative 6, comma, 24. And then I can write that in component form as negative 6i plus 24j. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you apply operations of a scalar as well as addition and subtraction with vectors. Thanks.